in taking on these characters, uh, I mean, you, you two are both uh, actors with extraordinary commitment to the truth of a performance and the interior life of a character being expressed in sincere terms. In the case of this film, these characters also have an iconic presence, and they're part of a grand visual design that's going on. And I was curious to ask both of you, in, in how do you balance in your process the sincerity of the interior process with the, the understanding of the iconic nature of the character? <laughs> you first. <laughs> I'm ready. I've worked with him before, so I think I can answer this. And it was a great experience, I might, might add. Um, I think I get it, what you're, you're, you're at. And, and I, I think one of the things that at least I tried, having seen Bob and known him my whole life, really, and um, admired him, my, and so it, at the onset, I thought, I don't know if I mentioned it to Michael, but I thought there should be that difference in, in, in the characters in terms of their, uh, how they come off, how they're, you know, what colors they're, they're in. And I thought that, uh, you know, the more introverted, more extroverted, I thought that would help with a balance. Uh, so, so we had talked about it, I think, Michael. I, I mean, you yeah. help me at all here. <laughs> <laughs> but the, that, was, that was part of it. And I, and I think I, I took a liberty. We did both. We had talked about it. I know that I, my character's uh, um, situation is different than his. Uh, and... and I, I, my life is falling apart, and his is just starting. And 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 uh, that was a key for me, anyway. And I, and also the car. I don't know if this has gotten out much. I don't know if I've ever said it. But I I might be breaking the law now, but I'll say it. Um, be, the character I played is is a guy. He's a, he's been around. He's done a lot of stuff, and he also uh, chips cocaine. And I I always thought that that was a um, a choice we made, and and but yet not not showing it because it would be somewhat uh, um, it was a little it would, it would attract too much attention, huh? It would attract too much. Attention. Yeah, but. There is a scene in it where it goes by really quick, but which we never get, never got into the film. And I've always wanted to say uh, sometimes, <laughs> just so you know where some of the behavior is coming from. <laughs> okay? I never thought I'd ever have that opportunity to say this, this you know, elegant audience here that I could actually, um, anyway. I've had to say it for 20 years, and I, I thanks for this opportunity, Mike. Oh, you're welcome, Al. <laughs> Thank you. Bro. Now, what, how it answers your question, it's kind of vague and around and around, but it sort of does in a yeah. way. No, it, it absolutely does. <laughs> now, Mr. De Niro. Yeah. <laughs> what was the question again? Fair point. <laughs> Neil, he's a very iconic figure in the design of the film, and yet he's played with total sincerity as a as a psychologically realistic character, and there are all there are all kinds of uh, nuances to it that I'm curious about, and maybe it's too intimate a question in terms of your process. But for example, I mean, he has an extraordinary, extraordinarily acute perception of the world and of what's going around him, and yet at times an unbelievable blind spot, particularly in his relationship with Edie, you know, when he strolls casually in and, you know, is drinking his drink and thinking about everything that's going on and expects her to just come come with him. Um, and I'm sort of curious as to the, how you approach that psychology, those blind spots with somebody who's that, that sharp. Well, you know, Michael wrote the script <clears throat> and the thing that, <laughs> about and the characters. The thing about Michael is that he's, he creates a tension 
in the uh, in the whole approach of the film, even in the pra in our training and everything, it's a whole kind of it just uh, it kind of affects you where you know every moment is I don't want to say precious, but kind of important. Uh, so the, the things that like the what you're talking about, and I'm not, I, I can't think specifically, but all I know is that whatever he does, it just makes the move, whatever he did was uh, important and um, creates a tension, if you will, or a tautness. Um, uh, what else could I, could I uh, say? What, what, what yeah. we all did together, the three of us did together, and everybody, and Val, and, 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 uh, uh, Ashley Judd, Amy Brenneman, and Diane Venor, everybody, and uh, uh, John Voigt, was we spent a lot of time building their histories. So what the film is, is, is the right now of it. Mm. What, what preceded that was very specific, very detailed history that we really immersed, we really immersed ourselves in. Why and how Hannah is a hunter. Why he truly is, and he's somebody who is all I am is who I'm going after, and why and how he is completely self-aware. There's no self-deception. And the only other person who is as conscious and unself-aware in the movie is Neil McCauley. And what was Neil McCauley doing when his father disappeared and he and his brother got remanded and they wound up in, um, in, in, in um, um, Gladiator Academies like Tracy or Chino, and he lost track of his father, lost track of his brother, and then graduated into crime. And at what point this very bright guy decided, I have to figure out, which is something observed with convicts in, uh, uh, who are bred in penitentiaries, and like, particularly Folsom, particularly in the 70s, by the way, when they had a lot more programs in the institutions, and they would really go into guys with third or fourth grade educations would walk in the libraries and say, give me a book that tells me about time. Yeah? tells me about my life. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do or I'm just gonna say, hello, gray walls, my life is yours and surrender to a life in prison. And instead of that, people like Neil McCauley, and this was part of the backstory, and this is part of the backstory of Neil McCauley, people like Neil McCauley find out what they think time is, that time is short and it has to be invested. And if you don't invest in it and have experience, it's your fault and it's not gonna happen. And then they continue to read, and they could read Marx and decide that property is theft, and that becomes a justification for stealing, or, or they get into Buddhism, and they decide that if anything happens to all the other people, that's, they're, they're working out their bad karma. What all the, so there's some of the philosophical underpinnings that is factual and part of the backstory of who Neil McCauley is when he gets out, and Technicolor is going to be New Zealand or Fiji. And all is a way station on the way to somewhere else. And then how does he minimize risk by being anonymous? And so it's a gray suit and a white shirt, so it's hard to describe him. And no attachments so that people can't, the cops can't cut into his communications and talk to people like Edie. So it's not supposed to be an Edie. Mm. Once there is an Edie in, in his life, it's supposed to be temporary. And that's why he's not going back, but then he's succumbs to the seduction and calls her and um, does go back with her. But, you but know. is that the fatalism of the film? I mean, we're talking about uh, outcomes and you're talking about each character. Yeah. The, the way fate works was just something we just invented, which is that what, what happened to each character is a function of the way he thinks life works. Mm. So it's char totally character-driven. And, and Neil, believing that um, being very doctrinaire and not having attachments, uh, and that's a very efficient and effective navigation system through the way station. If he deviates from that, which he does, on the, on the Palisades when he's talking, he's talking to Edie, if he, if he deviates from that, then there has to be a repercussion, and cause and effect will be brutal. Mm. So the Neil, who is flying free and is, and is uh, moved by emotions like vengeance or rage or deciding to go after Wayne Grove. The Neil from the beginning of the movie wouldn't have gone, would never have gone after Wayne, Wayne Grove. Mm. So that's the, when, whereas another character like Val Kilmer, who's kind of postmodern and doesn't have doctrine, doesn't have discipline, he skates. Mm. So what happened to them, their fate was a function of who they were as characters in the engine of the story and the way it drives to the end. 